Thank you for listening to this podcast from TRE. Talk Radio Europe, your voice in Spain and around the world. For more information, please visit tre.radio. Discuss, challenge, inform, comment, viewpoint on Talk Radio Europe. Giles Brown. Live comment and discussion with studio guests. Viewpoint. Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 5th of September. You're listening to Viewpoint Talk Radio's current affairs program with invited guests where we discuss the issues of the day with you for the next two hours. We'll be still talking about that kiss, uh, plus some other bits and pieces, including is it safe to go back at schools, perhaps, with the whole situation with the aerated concrete and anything else that seems to be casting your radar. If you've got a viewpoint you want to get across to us, uh, then the Numbers are the numbers are as follows. To contact TRE, please call 952 78 4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus 34 645 99 67 95. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. And those are the numbers to get in contact with us, the ways to get in contact with us today. Uh, joined in the studio by Rosalind Scott Gibb. But first of all, let's have a look at, let's have a look at what's making, uh, the front pages, the front pages, uh, in the UK, in the UK today. Starting off, uh, top of my list this morning, top of my list this morning, uh, Ministers TV blunder and Blairites are back seem to be the main ones. So, uh, let's see what they're saying this morning. Metro accuses ministers of a concrete bungle in the way they've handled what it calls the school building's chaos. Daily Mirror brands the Prime Minister and the Education Secretary Gillian Keegan the class clowns who've left parents furious with the late closure of schools. Writing in The Times, the head of the National Audit Office, Gareth Davis, says the Conservatives have put sticking plaster on risky concrete by failing to invest in unflashy but essential tasks like maintaining buildings. The Guardian's Gabby Hinscliffe, Hinscliffe excuse me, says the latest failures highlight a wider national story about corners being cut and about chickens squawking home to roosts. The Daily Mail believes that Miss Keegan's Explosive laden, laden outburst during a television interview says it all about what it calls Tory chaos. The rants has left Miss Keegan fighting for survival, according to the Daily Telegraph, with one Conservative MP telling the paper her contact was selfless, selfish and shambles. If you don't know what happened, she said, whilst dropping the F-bomb a lot, uh, how it was the fact it would be nice for her to get some appreciation when she was the only one doing something right. Uh, the Financial Times says the scandal has derailed Rishi Sunak's plan and autumn relaunch, leaving him on the back foot ahead of two by-elections this autumn. Elsewhere, uh, a number of papers cover Sakir Starmer's reshuffle of Labour's shadow cabinet. The I says he's called up the Blairites as he tries to build a centrist team to sell the party. Mirror's leader column says Sakir has cracked the rip in a ruthless reshuffle that sets Labour up for a bitter battle with the Conservatives. Now, the paper adds, the party needs vivid, radical and credible policies. Writing in the Times, uh, Patrick McGuire suggests Sakir has completed the most dramatic metamorphosis in recent political history. The Sun welcomes the government's expected announcement later today that it's easing planning restrictions on onshore wind farms. The paper says the Tories have run scared of NIMBY voters for too long. However, Rowan P- Pelling in The Telegraph accuses ministers of wantingly sacrificing the countryside at the altar of net zero. Scottish Daily Mail has accused Police Scotland of waving the right white flag on crime, ordering officers not to follow up on minor offences like break-ins and thefts. The paper describes it as a shabby surrender to criminals. The force says the plans will allow officers to focus on more pressing issues. And The Times is one of several papers to report on a study that finds that when it comes to romantic relationships, opposites do not attract. The study, by US researchers, looked at data from almost 80,000 British couples. 
It found partners were more likely to share traits such as political and religious views, IQ and education levels. The lead researcher tells the paper the findings back up the saying that birds of a feather are more likely to flock together. Meanwhile, those front pages again. Top of my pile today uh, is the Financial Times. Crumbling schools put Sunak uh, on back foot. Uh, as two by elections, uh, as two by elections uh, loom, uh, the metro leads with school ba- uh, school buildings chaos, concrete bungle. Uh, Starmer calls up Blairites to fight election as left demoted. Uh, that's on the I. Uh, meanwhile, the Daily Express. Uh, miracle weight loss jab to save lives and costs six point five billion pound bill. Uh, Health Secretary Steve Barclay's comments on uh, WeGo V injections have made the front page of the Daily Express. Uh, Mr. Barclay refers to the weight loss drug as a miracle, so it could help cut the NHS's 6.5 billion annual bill for treating and tackling obesity. Meanwhile, uh, The Guardian, Sunak under pressure over school funding as concrete crisis uh, grows, and also Education Secretary forced to apologise after off-camera remarks. Uh, Minister's TV blunder that says says it's all about Tory chaos. Uh, That's the Daily Mail. Uh, Meanwhile, the Daily Mirror leads with uh, as thousands of kids in limbo, the class clowns. It's revealed Sunak blocked cash uh, for rebuilding schools. Oh, and Education Secretary uh, says uh, she's done a good job. Uh, Daily Telegraph, concrete crisis and hot mic rant. The Keegan fighting for survival. Education secretary criticised others who sat on their whatevers as it emerges she was on holiday in days before schools were closed. Uh, And finally, and finally, the Daily Star. Who says uh, they've got a, a they've offered their readers a more lighthearted splash on the fact that on Dracula's eating habits. However, like all other papers, it has still made space for the school building story, opting to use a photoshopped image of Miss Keegan with a clown's nose. Uh, and we have uh, Dracula's a vegan is nothing sacred. Mmm, garlic, my favourite fangs ain't what they used to be. And those, for better or worse, are your headlines. Uh, this Tuesday, the 5th of September. The weather forecast is brought to you by Liberty Seguros. Liberty Seguros gives you now 50 euros cash back for every new car, home or insurance policy you take out. But hurry, this offer is valid until the 27th of November only. The weather on Talk Radio Europe. Find us at tre.radio. Today, it's Costa del Sol, uh, Costa del Sol, 23 degrees and sunny. Granada, 19 degrees, also sunny, a high of 30. Uh, Almeria, 25 degrees, lengthy sunny spells. Murcia, 24 degrees, sunny spells, 25 degrees in Alicante, again sunny. Denia, mostly cloudy with the risk of thunderstorms, a high of uh, 26, sorry, it's 26 at the moment. Ibiza, 27 degrees, and again, mostly cloudy. Palma, 27 degrees at the moment, and mainly sunny. And Gibraltar, 20 degrees and sunny through the day, a high of 27. And that is your weather. The weather on Talk Radio Europe. Find us at tre.radio. Viewpoint with Giles Brown. Always live, always live. If you want to get involved with today's viewpoint, here are the numbers. To contact TRE, please call 952 78 4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus 34 645 99 67 95. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. 
joined in the studio this morning by Roslyn Scott Gibb. Good morning to you, Roslyn. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, everyone. And I must say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just my remarks. The short haircuts. I mean, you know, I know that summer is almost coming to an end, but it's it's it's, it's very lovely. It's very lovely. I'm oh, only jealous, thank obviously. You. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. Well, my hairdresser. You know, you're never allowed to argue with a hairdresser. And um, well, I did once. And I just room. looked up and I said, "Oh, that right, was... you did cut it." <laughs> he said, "It's August," well, so he put me in my place. Well, exactly. <laughs> Blimey. I, I, I should be careful with my dreadlocks when I go in next time, obviously. Uh, How are you? Have you survived the summer? Well, yes, absolutely survived. But then, you know, then there's this storm in September. Everything everything happens. People come back and everything becomes very busy. Again. Again. Yeah, they're again. from their breaks going, did I miss much? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, it's nice to have the cooler weather. Yes, indeed. Slightly cooler. And, you know. Becoming and, and get rid of some of those drivers. Oh, <laughs> just don't start. Just don't start. I'll have to say, I mean, it was just, there was there were nights that I stayed at the studio rather than actually go then then head across back through part, past the port of abuse. Absolutely. Uh, because yes. I think I think that they've got rid of in certain in certain countries. I think they got rid of the driving license and said if you can do PlayStation or Grand Theft Auto, you can have a driving license. When you're high on drugs, well, <laughs> or alcohol. Yes. Anyway, I must say. I mean, I it's, th- it's Thursday and it's just gone p- uh, 20 past 10, but if you're game, I am. I think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, every time I got in the car, I, I, I really thought of which way I could go to save my life <laughs> and still get to my destination. Right then, <laughs> let's move on swiftly from the, now that the boys of summer have gone, tish boom. Um, um, this... <sighs> Whilst yes, whilst since since we last ma- met, we had the we had a football match of Spain Spain's women, and it was a great thing for women for women in general. The, the, you know, the women's sport was at a high, and we're sorry to be banging on about this, but it's very important. Women's sport was at a high; it was in the right place for all the right reasons. It was a great tournament; everybody was enthralled. And then, boom, the kiss! Not since Rodin did the sculpture has a kiss become uh, so famous. Well, that's, you know, that's what annoys me more than anything, that it's always the kiss. Nobody ever mentioned the fact that he commonly, often, was shaking his penis all over the place in public, beside the Queen, next to the, the Queen. The grab, you mean, the grab of the, yes. I mean, he didn't actually have it out, Rosalind. Well, he didn't have it out. No, exactly. But he was, he was making, a, a, he was making coarse well, it's gestures. it's a pretty primitive behaviour. Yeah. But that's never mentioned, just the kiss. Yeah. And... The fact is, it's, it, we know that the kiss was the last straw. He'd been under investigation for some time mm-hmm. for all sorts of things like bribery, um, allegedly. Yeah. It hasn't been proven yet. Right. Bribery, trafficking. Now, I don't know what the trafficking would trafficking. be. Trafficking. Trafficking, yes, but I don't know what it would be. Even his uncle, I mean, I know his mother went into, wouldn't eat and went into church and all that, but his uncle says he's a horrible piece of work and he's so arrogant that he's horrible and he deserves everything he gets. His uncle couldn't say anything nice about him at all. So, um, and you know, what kind of surprised me a little bit, because this is not uncommon in women's sports, that women are taken advantage of, uh, put in a vulnerable position by whether it's the doctor or the um, coach or whoever it is, and they suffer greatly And they, if they want to stay in sports. They put up with their young women, their young girls, young women. They start at a young age. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's not uncommon. And yet even the number of people I speak to, and they say, well, you know, in the photographs I saw, it looked pretty mutual to me. Well, there are, you know, pictures, are, pictures have emerged of her grinning on the bus afterwards. And sharing, you know, with a, with a picture of the kiss of the of uh, the footballer in question. Okay, well, I still defend her because maybe she has very mixed emotions. You know, these are young people, and their whole future is ahead of them. He's still the boss. Mm. He's still the one in charge. He's the one that decides whether they play or not. Right? Yeah. So maybe she felt uh, there could be many reasons. It doesn't that doesn't make it okay? And, and the other thing is, and it doesn't mean it's it's was agreed. And besides, even if it was mutual, it wasn't appropriate. Ah, you see, this this is the, so. Are we getting to? A, I mean, I think because Andreas was on last week, and he was saying that basically the guy is is perhaps a little a little coarse. A little coarse. <laughs> yes, you know, <laughs> extremely just, coarse. Yeah, primitive. Primitive. Okay, that's the. Um, but it also, it's, this is the same week that Getafe Football Club have um, 
have taken on uh, Mason Greenwood. Now, Mason Greenwood was a Manchester United footballer who was acquitted of of rape and sexual assault. And he was acquitted, uh, but there was a huge backlash against him with Manchester United, and they, they released him from their contract. <clears throat> and then, in the middle of this whole situation with the Spanish women's team, a, a Premier League or a Spanish La Liga team then go and hire somebody who is... OK, he's been acquitted, but it was a pretty murky business, some pretty murky stuff came out from uh, the investigations into, into, into Greenwood's actions. So, you know, it's Spain, with this whole culture, of, you know, we've, and we've made huge strides, but Spain, you know, in, in the, the, the journey towards equality... But Spain has got, still got a very long way to go, do you think, Ross? A long way to go. I mean, years ago when I was writing, you know, I had a column, A Woman's View. And, and so I would, you know, talk to women in various professions, various ages, you know, at university, at school, working and things. They said, oh, no, everything's fine here. Everything's equal. They didn't really know the difference, I'm guessing, because the salaries still are 20 to 30 percent below men, the same as it is in many other countries. And although because the Constitution is quite new, 1978 or right. 75, whatever it was, um, it, it's considered that the, the law is more favorable to women. But if it is, it's still not carried out. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have personal, ex- I have lots of personal experience in my, in, you know, my working life here. I won't go into that, but I will go into, like, my, my neighbor right next door is a 45 year old primitive. And here he is in the middle of the day. I'm getting into my car. He's standing at his door. He's got two sons, but they're looking the other way. He drops his pants and shows me his penis. Right. And then he turns around and shows me his bottom. Okay, well, I mean, that's... what kind of a guy does this? He's, I mean, I've already taken him to court three times. I lose. Right. I lose. <laughs> Doesn't matter whether it's a male judge or a female judge. So, you know, what concerns me a little bit uh-huh. is that women, I don't believe they get the sympathy they should from their fellow women either. 952-78-4000. Let me know your views on this or anything else that is uh, crossing your viewpoint. Another thing that's come off the back of uh, the situation with uh, Ruby Alice, his mother went on hunger strike. She went into a church. Mm-hmm. She then was transferred to a hospital. Uh, there was a sort of dramatic announcement that she was, uh, you know, she was, this would be her last night. She wasn't, it wasn't her last night. Um, but on... Um, on one, of the, well, on one of the Spanish TV uh, TV uh, stations, uh, they sorry the program is called the Last Night. My apologies. Um, they a comic called Juan Davia. Um, he basically made fun of of the uh, of the mother, and and that's drawn flack as well now because it's saying you know you shouldn't they shouldn't you know, she's, she, she was taken out of uh, the emergency. Uh, the emergency ward on Wednesday last week, and she's now resting, recuperating at home. But what kind of a son allows his mother to do that? I'm sure... I mean, what? What, just answer my question. What kind of a son allows his mother to go into church and go into starvation? I mean, surely he's some influence over his own mother. He could have stopped her. He raised as much support in any direction he could, and still is. If Most of it's backfired, and, and I, I think we'll see the end of him. But he did everything he could to pressure all the girls, all the people. But um, but there's a few behind the scenes, a few men that have had enough of him. Well, yeah, but I mean, the thing is, he's he's still there. He's not he's not gone. He's I mean, not he's, yet, but he will. He, yeah, but you think because the the Spanish the Spanish female players and they're not they're not going to play they're not going to play any more football until he's gone. Exactly, and some of the, I thought some of the men had come in too and and yeah. backed the women up as well. You know, the other thing now. Um, I'm trying to remember where I saw it. I probably saw it online, but I think it was the the British tabloid press then had all these photos of foot men, mm. football players, kissing each other on the lips in exuberation. Have you come across this? Well, no, but so... Trying to say, point, so this is OK, this is what's done, yeah. this is the way it's yeah, but done. Yeah, that's, that's, that's perhaps different because, it's again, it's... That is on the football field whilst they're scoring or they scored a goal. You kiss people on the lips. Well, you know, footballers are like that. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yes, really. <laughs> I mean, not, not. I mean, obviously, I'm a rugby guy, so we you know you don't kiss anybody in rugby. Oh, you don't. Well, but not. football does. Well, yeah. then it, it was it only can, about I mean, um, two years ago in um, one of the American team. They discovered this whole whole cult of. Uh, um, um, I don't know where you're going with this, Rod, but come on. <laughs> Men, uh, football players, 
you know, sort of whole cult of football players meeting meeting two or three times a month to engage in okay, sex. Okay, moving swiftly onwards. <laughs> with each other. Okay. So maybe, well, if they can kiss each other on the lips right on the field, I yes. guess they can go off and... Let's, let's, okay, 952 <laughs> the phone number, studio at tre.radio, is the email. Give us a shout on that. Yes, Roger, you're raising your hands up, mate. Just, as, okay, if we're going to talk about kissing on the lips, it does bring to mind the other issue of, of like, um, a father kissing his daughter on the lips. You see, I happen to have... I don't have a daughter, but I have strong feelings that... Right. You can kiss on your cheeks or... But not on the lips. Yeah. It just doesn't... Isn't correct behaviour. Mm. So maybe some of our listeners have an opinion about Nine, that, five, two, four thousand. Gary, I'll come to your point in a minute. I know you wanted to make that point. But morning, Corley. You're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Uh, yeah, good morning. It's Sharon. Uh, uh, sh- uh, morning to you. Sorry. Morning to you both. It's Sharon from Alicante. Good morning, um, Sharon. Hiya. Um, I, I, I said last week that, that, that I agree with everything Ross says. It's just he's a, like a Neanderthal man, I think. He's, he's a horrendous piece of work. But we look at the UK, we've got massive problems in schools, and I know this from first hand, with boys upskirting girls. Yes. And a lot of the girls at the comprehensive schools in the UK are really suffering because they're being hounded by the boys in a way they've never been hounded before. And as I said last year, we're not totally devoid of the Andrew Tate culture, culture in England. It is a little bit different, um, but, uh, you know, it's a, this is a universal problem now that, uh, across the Western world, and we have to do something about it. But it's not just Spain. This is UK as well. Mm-hmm. OK. I, That's my point. Thanks, Thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank, Thank you. you. I agree. Can I speak? Yeah, I speak. I agree a hundred percent. It's it, but it's not even just the Western world. It's the whole world. I mean, look what's happening in Iran, Afghanistan, uh, China. It's a problem too. India. But I agree with this upskirting. This never happened in schools before. You know what upskirting is, right? Yes, of course. Yes, I do know what upskirting. Well, maybe our listeners don't. Fair enough. It's taking Giles? photographs. It's putting. It's taking photographs uh, with your mobile phone by putting your your device underneath and up the skirt. Hence the name. Mm. Gary just comes in very quickly. Uh, the son asked his mother. Morning, Gary. The son asked his mother not to take the action she did. But by the way, does the film of the team on the bus afterwards shouting "Beso, Beso, Beso" mean nothing? Rubiales will go. Shouldn't even have been there. But make sure he goes for the right reasons. So uh, I'm missing his point. What is his, his point? His point is the fact that does the film right? So the son asked his mother not to take, get, not to go on the hunger strike. Well, she, she could. He could have been a bit more forceful. I'm sure. I mean, he's been forceful enough, surely, by kissing the woman on the lips in the, in the first place. No, uh, but he says. But he says. By the way, does the film of the team on the bus afterwards shouting "Beso, Beso, Beso" mean nothing? This is the picture she's holding up. She's holding up the, the image. Yeah. Of yeah. the, you know, on social media and, and grinning, and, and and obviously people say, well, look, this is this is proof that she she's not that concerned, and perhaps perhaps Roz, this has been hijacked by some sort of U two movement no. for their own for their own political means. I don't th- no you no know, I don't think you can write it off for that, and and who knows what was going on with a team of girls after the after the game, and, and that's probably been hijacked. Well, it's probably, I'm sure that's, that's been a hijacked. Banter, surely. Well, I think, okay, they were teasing. Um, so, okay, but you can still make light of some because you don't exactly, you have mixed feelings. They're young, young women in a very uh, sort of intense situation. And I'm sure there's a lot of feelings and maybe she's even just going on, going along with it to you be mean, one so of the after, girls. After a period of quiet re- re- reflection, you think, contemplation, she thought, hang on a second, this wasn't right. She might have thought it all along. Right. But, okay. you, I, but is she going to go against all the girls and say, ah, oh, don't do well, that? Well, all the girls are I mean, all the girls are with her. I mean, it seems to be with I think that's been hijacked. I what? really believe that picture of them on the bus and saying, best of so and stuff has been hijacked. And it's, we don't know what was going on. Nobody knows what's going on. 9527884000 is the phone number. This whole thing about, the, is I, I saw this report about upskirting. And uh, and nine five two seventy eight four thousand and and Sharon made, Sharon just made you know made made that um, spoke those two words that well ah, I was going to say something about but I have been beaten to it by the phones morning calling alive on TRE what's your name where are you calling from what's your viewpoint please 
I am Alan Jones calling from Gandia in Spain. Good morning to you, Alan. How are you this morning? I'm very good. Now, what I want you to add to the uh, football women's excellence uh, and uh, the beautiful game conversation yeah. is that economists have always agreed that it's women in the in the sort of Western world they manage disposable income. Now, obviously, when there is no women's football, there's no sponsorship for women's football. But eventually, women's football can become a big money spinner for sponsorship if FIFA would allow it. Now, FIFA must divide completely down the middle to have a women's football structure immunized from the cheating corruption of the men so that it can grow uncluttered with cheating mm. and maintain the beautiful game. The, the pro- Alan, noble sentiments indeed. The problem is that FIFA itself perhaps is is not exactly the whitest of white of organisations because of the... Exactly, yes. Yeah. So, so, so they need to appoint some world-recognised person to organise the top-down split, someone like Billie Jean King, who is younger than Trump, and will, as a woman, live probably 10 years longer than he. She has the energy and the experience of making a women's sport equivalent in pay, etc. And also you could argue, could argue Anna, that she has the energy, she has the experience, and more importantly, she has the empathy because she, she fought for equal pay for within the women's or you know, better pay in the, uh, in the WTA, didn't she? Yes, she, she, she's proven to be successful in, in applying her, her, her complete commitment to equality of the sexes. Obviously, as I say, because there is no real history of women's football, because there was no, nothing to sponsor, it's a, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a green field which needs someone with her intelligence, insights and power to drive forward. And FIFA must re- relinquish women's football. I mean, look at the, 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 the sort of scandals and stuff. Well, just take any sport where men are involved with women. I mean, in, in America, there's a big scandal in the, in the gymnast arena. It, 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 without even having to say that, it is totally wrong. That the, 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 I mean, from the days of Maradona, when cheating became lauded, I remember England winning the World Cup when the world when the world played the beautiful game beautifully, fouling and diving was not really a part of the game. People played football not for huge sums of money, but for the joy and the exposure and the fun of it. Very true, very true words indeed, Alan. Thanks for thanks for, I, I, impassioned. I think on a Tuesday morning. Yes, very much so. Good. Good for you. Thank you. you. Didn't see, but Rosalind was nodding Thank away you. enthusiastically for everything you were saying there, Alan. Thank you, Charles. That, thanks Bye-bye. very much for the call. That's Alan up in Gandhi. If you want to get involved, we've got a point to make. Uh, these are the numbers. To contact TRE, please call 952 78 4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. And the phones are going a little bit crazy this morning, which is always good. Morning, Cool, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Good morning, Giles. Peter. Good morning, Peter. Good morning. As I've said so many times on this program and many other outside of this program, keep politics out of sport. And uh, this is proof why. Um, the former caller, the gentleman said about separating the two organisations, I've been saying for a long, long time, and that would be a great move. The problem that they have on that is women don't generate any money in, in football, in soccer. So uh, they're, for want of a better word, they're parasites on the man's game at the moment and I can understand why FIFA are doing it um, obviously down the line they think that they might generate a ton of money out of it if it kicked off but uh, as we've seen in the United States of America and many other places when they've attempted to do certain things it's, it's not panned out and the women's game has a long 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 way to go and before anyone accuses me of some sort of misogyny um, 
I follow women's football. I follow uh, for my sins. I'm a Saints supporter, a Southampton supporter, and I have been all my life. And I follow a woman. And, and hats off to Southampton Football Club. They were one of the last to bring in a women's football team. And they said when they did it, they would do it properly. And the, men, the men's facilities would be available to the women's facilities. And true to their word, they did it. They started at the bottom. They got promoted last year. They're top of the league this year. They're a very good side in that division. Uh, but the problem is we're success washing everything because we're looking at the Lionesses, we're looking at the Spanish side, and we're looking at the American side. And look what happened to the American side when they became political and started asking for more money and that the country turned on them and they were very unsuccessful at this World Cup. Yeah. And also people are forgetting that Spain, the Spanish manager dropped, was it 13 or 15 girls from the squad because of political reasons, because of wokeness, because of demands for this and demands for that. And he kicked him out of the squad and he stood by and he brought in some young girls and they won the World Cup. So that man needs to take some, uh, give, be given some credit for that because he's, he's gone in there unexpectedly and won a World Cup. And I do believe he didn't even get the uh, manager, uh, Best Manager Award. I think that went to the English woman, didn't it? So it Indeed. shows how much politically incorrect and the problem in the women's game and, and as I said watching Southampton women and they played at the weekend they beat Blackburn 2 nil, top of the table I watched the highlights on Southampton channel on YouTube and I called my wife in to show her there was not a single is that Blackburn I couldn't see a fan in the ground not one there was a horseshoe shape behind the bench of a few maybe family friends substitutes and that but the ground was empty yeah. and the same as Southampton women they're not generating any funds. The funds is coming from the fans, from TV money. They're using the best physios. They're getting the best training grounds. That, I mean, for what they get at Southampton, second to none. But they're not generating any money. Now, if FIFA, UEFA, or whatever you want to call it, women's FIFA, split away, they would die within moments. But stop success washing it. And, and uh, you know, it's like... I doubt very much if Rosalind could name a English football woman's side or what position they're in or where they play. Sure. And uh, it's a very, very, very early stage game. And, yeah. and I, I wonder whether it will actually take off. It's the thing. It's the thing, Pete, just quickly. I'm just thinking because I'm, it's interesting because I, I, most of the support that I, I get, I listen to on the radio because of, because of my situation, as it were. Mm -hmm. And Fair you enough. can, when you, so when you've got a Premier League match, you, you know, you just hear the roar of, you know, of, of a large crowd of a 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 seats, uh, seats, uh, stadium. But when you, when you do hear the women's, be it, be it. Can hear them talk. Yeah. You can hear them talk. You can hear talk, talking the whole thing. And you, you kind of think, okay. And it, one may argue it's early stages. There needs to be more exposure, et cetera. And, and that perhaps is, is also, and this is going to be, this is, this is here, here I come being my dinosaur thing. When they, when they bring on a, an England international, it's, an, and it's one of somebody from the, from the women's team or whatever. And they're speaking about what it feels like to go on to, you know, a pitch during a premiership match. And, and you kind of think, and, and shoot me down with in flames, listeners, but you kind of think, well, hang on a second. You're talking about playing for Manchester City's women against Birmingham City's women. And it's a somewhat different situation situation than playing Man City's first team, you know, in, in a cauldron, in, you know, in a Manchester derby. I agree with you 100%. And not only that, John, take it up a level. When they play for England, you know, you get 90,000 passionate young girls and with their parents and family and that, and the, the screaming and the noise is fantastic. Then they go and play Saturday in an empty in an empty ground where they can hear every word. And it's like when we watch the Premiership during COVID, mm -hmm. it just loses it, doesn't it? And it's going to be very difficult to get fans on board. To give you another example, my, my wife used to play very good level um, netball. Okay. And she used to write a netball column for the Southampton Evening Echo. And she campaigned for the Southampton Evening Echo because it was dominated by men's sport. She kept campaigning saying, why don't you cover any women's sport? And it was basically, well, what women's sport? What is it? So she, she invented a column called Nets About Nutball and wrote a column until she came here about netball. She was very involved that's, in the That's very good, by the way. Nets About Nutball is a very, is a yeah, very good yes. Nets About Nutball is fantastic. And uh, don't tell her that. I uh, don't like pinning medals on her chest. <laughs> but anyway, um, no, she was fantastic and done a great job. And when she left, someone else took it over. And I believe it still runs now. And they, they're much better at run, uh, covering women's sport. And I follow women's netball. My wife barely ever does. I like it at the international level. And... In women's netball, many people might not be aware because they're a standalone organization. Nobody funds them. They've got their Sky TV um, uh, package and they're doing very well for themselves. Now, there is a men's netball association and men do play netball. 
and a mediocre netball side in, say, Southampton could thrash the England women's side. And we, we need to stop comparing and let women stand on their own and do their own thing. And I don't think football would be successful for women. I think it's, it's I, I don't know, I think it's a bit of a fad and I think it's going to take a long, long time to get there. But if FIFA, FIFA are invested in it, they're invested in it. But if you're playing, if a woman and you're playing football and you're playing football for FIFA or UEFA or any of those organisations, you've got to accept the environment you're in. It's like a woman being a fire person and going to a male-dominated uh, a, a, a job. That, that's the problem they got. But whereas in, in netball, men have never campaigned for equality and get the money and the, the exposure that women do in netball. Yet there's quite a strong netball league. And, and many of them are failed basketball players or they're injured basketball players. But there's levels to this. And, and women are, are not standalone successful in their football. International football is getting a, a, a light shone at the moment. But it's certainly not successful and it's not from bottom up. We've seen what can happen at the top, but it's, it's, it's going to take a long time to trickle down if it ever does. But um, keep politics out of sport. Peter. Stand alone, females and males, I, I believe. So I'll leave you on that one, John. Thank you very much, Peter. Good to have you with us. 952-78-4000, the phone number, studio at tre.radio, is the email. Joined in the studio uh, by Roslyn Scott Gibb. Looking at some of the looking at some of the comments coming on the uh, on the Facebook page, Talk Radio Official. Uh, this is from uh, Elizabeth uh, in Brighton. Hello there, uh, read the kiss. I think I heard on the BBC World Service um, uh, around midnight an interview with the female player said it was no problem and laughed it off. By the next morning, it was all horror and shock. Mm, stay safe. Take care. Um, and that's from the from uh, from uh, Liz in Brighton. Good to have you with us. Nine five two seventy eight four thousand. Ros. Well, you see, there's another woman you. saying nothing to it and against it. But you know, I think I think the Spanish male needs to be put in his place. Right. <laughs> and um, whether it's in the in the workplace or anywhere else, okay. and and the legal situation, because even if the laws are in place that the judges are not necessarily following through in these situations. And I have many examples of, of how this is happening. So I was also delighted that this would bring attention and focus on the behavior of, of men, of right. men here in Spain, of some Spanish men. Looking at some of the WhatsApps coming in, uh, the WhatsApp number plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. 6795 uh, This in from Sam. Women's football will take off 100%. It's just being held back to adjust to see who's going to make money from it. Don't doubt it for one second. Um, because, yeah, I mean, presumably it's, it's going to be, the, it's the marketing of the sport, isn't it? It's the, if you build it, they will come. We have the European champions in, in the UK and we have the Spanish champions. Having said that, in Sp- the world champions, sorry, in Spain. Having said that, I mean, the Classico, the, the women's Classico at the now camp, I think it was 90, 90, over 90,000 spectators for that one. So there is a market for it. You're, yes, exactly. You're nodding your head, for, you know, well, it appears to me, I, I mean, Peter's right, I don't follow sport. But because sport has become so political, yeah. I do follow that. And there were, there were a huge number of um, uh, followers there. And the first about to say, and the phones go off again. And with a trembling hand, I say, <laughs> I say, uh, what's your name? Uh, what's, <laughs> hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? You know who it is. And your hand should be trembling. It should be trembling. Um, can, I, can I, can Good I just morning, bring Gary. to Good morning, Can you. I just bring to your attention the yeah. best comment was a lady that phoned in last week, yeah. and she made a comment about the mother of Rubiales when she said, "If you've got this sort of person whose mother supports him, then that's the basis. That's the foundation of the problem." Having said that. I've had many discussions within the family, various great big debates, rows, arguments, uh, speaking as a a father of one son, two daughters, a strident wife, um, but in the pubs and the bars and other places, etc. I've said from day one, if, if, um, if obviously Rubiales, if this sounds as I'm defending him, I can't help that, but if, if uh, Rubiales has committed an offence, or the only, the, the offence, if any he appears to have committed at the moment, is in the court of public opinion. Now, after he kissed her forcefully on the lips, 
which I wasn't there. I think he was caught up in the... It sounds like excuse. He's been caught up in the moment. It's got to be brought in context. But if there was any complaint, and it seems obviously to me that nothing was said at the time, and someone's hijacked this with their own agendas, but if, there is, if it's a sexual assault, then go to court. But what I really get angry about is that a lot of people are hanging him before he's gone to court... And if the, if he goes to court for sexual assault, then the the footage of him on the coach where she is smiling, if not laughing, mm. and he made a comment, "All oh, don't, you're making me blush," with her supporters and teammates on the bus. If it goes to court, then let us come out with all the evidence against and for him, because otherwise. I don't want to live in a society where someone is hung, drawn and quartered. I've done my research on the man, yeah. and he, he's not a nice man, and uh, he's had problems in the past, and my son said he should go. And I said, it seems as though he should go, he shouldn't have been there at the beginning. But let's all make sure, people, he goes for the right reasons, because otherwise you're going down a very dangerous road, where, such as people when they say, oh, there's no smoke without fire, uh, fire etc. Uh, and the bottom line is, you're innocent until, until proven guilty. But you can't discount and pick and choose the evidence. Gary, Cheerio. thank you very much for your call in there. 95278-4000, Roz. I'm, I'm just back to my original point that the whole emphasis on one kiss, whereas that is the tip of the iceberg. The, he's a nasty piece of work. He's got a history of um, the way he treats his the it's women my, players. Right. His, so I don't think the man should go to prison or anything like that. I don't think, but I think he should lose his job, his three hundred thousand a year job plus whatever and, else and he gets, some and, the, and the rest. Can I take a quick break and then back with more Viewpoint? Viewpoint with Giles Brown. Always live, always lively. Straight to the lines we go. Morning, caller. Thank you for holding your live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Yeah, hi. It's, it's uh, John and Mia. Hello, John. Um, I, I, I've only just turned on, so maybe I missed it, but I, I thought I heard somebody saying that a kiss is something like a sexual assault. Yeah, sexual assault, it, yeah. I, I don't know about in Spain. In England, it's called common assault, and that's all it is. Someone against their will is common assault. Yeah, and but... And it's maximum. It's, it's sort of a magistrate minor thing, you know? No, well, it's, it, it, this is being held up because the final is held in... I, I, I presume it's, it's where the final is held in. In Australia, it's classified as sexual assault, uh, kissing somebody uh, without their consent. OK, I'll, I'll check on that. I, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so sorry if I got it's that all right. wrong. Thanks, okay. very much for the, thanks for the, very okay. much for the call in there. 952-784-1000. Roz, you're looking pensive. Well, yes. As I say, I, I mean, I don't think the man should go to prison for a kiss, OK? But it, as I say, well, it's not just a kiss, but I think he ju- should just lose his job. Just get him out of the position. Give it to somebody else. He's the second one that's being fired or... Hasn't done a good job. Not yet. Not, um, uh, Being. There's a, there's a, there's a quick thing, <laughs> in thing. the process. Just because you're nasty doesn't mean it shouldn't be a, shouldn't be a reason to be fired from a job just because you're nasty. Uh, Certain politicians abuse, have made... Abuse, of, abuse of the women. No, no, just nasty. It wouldn't be... Well, you mean throwing his penis around. <laughs> OK, Ross, he's not throwing... I, I know you like dropping your penis word in every just, day. <laughs> Please, just because it's still in his people pants. Are still having, people are still having their cornflakes at this point. Though. Just because it's still in oh, his right, pants yes. doesn't mean it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, yes, all right, for us. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one going off to, on holiday. I, I should be the one being demob happy, and you're the one who's giggling away anyway. Let's, let's, let's move swiftly onwards uh, with that one as well. 952 uh, Just looking at some of the more, some more bits and pieces coming in from... Um, from you on this one, um, look, studio at tre.radio is the email, of course, uh, in the emails, uh, oh, excuse me, that, that's what's happening there. Excuse me, just bear with me for, ah, here we go. Men like, okay, men like Rubiales have mums like Angeles who perpetrate the misogynist behaviour. You see, his mother should have gone, you stupid, you, as, you know, in the words of, of uh, yes. Captain Mannering, you stupid boy. Anybody born after the 80s, bo- uh, ask your parents. Also, Julie, the point is, Gary, he is technically her boss. What was she supposed to do? Slap him in public? He exactly. was abusing. All right, Ruff. <laughs> 
he was abusing his position. As Ross says, it's the tip of the iceberg. To the lines we go. Uh, morning, Calder, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, what's your viewpoint, please? Morning, Giles. It's Alf. Morning, Alf. Ben or Medina. Oh, no, that's, we're not supposed to speak English, are Ben or Medina. Ben or Medina. Don't do yeah. OK, Wonderful come on. Ben or Medina. Right, finger Hi, in your eye roll. Right, come on. Yes, so anyway, morning to you, my friend. Um... First of all, I mean, I agree with almost everything that Peter says. But a bit, it's not that I disagree with him, but he says, keep politics out of sport. I only have one comment to that, if only. I've said it so many times. There isn't anything that happens in our lives that isn't affected and imposed upon and interfered with by politics. Nothing. So it's good to say and have that idea, well, keep, keep politics out of sport. But it's the only way, as you well know, all the politicians make all the rules. And if you, if you don't agree with them, you have to get rid of them. Therefore, it all becomes political. So you know, I, I also agree to a certain extent, to a certain extent, about the women's game. And it, and it needs massive investment. I'm not sure about America because America started the process of promoting the women's game. It's, the UK has taken off you know, pretty, pretty much so. Spain is a long way behind. So for winning the World Cup, you know, that was fantastic for them. Uh, and and, and living, living so long in Spain and being British, we had two lots to support. So we had the English team and the Spanish team. Yeah. So, rather weird household with all the cheering and shouting. Um, but, you know, it, it, there's no way you're going to keep politics out of the sport. And, and that's whether it spoils it or not, you have to deal with it. And the only way to deal with it is to get involved in the politics, unfortunately. And, and part of that also is, you know, Gary said, and, and again, I agree with, with most of what he says, but... He then, part of what he was saying is we shouldn't judge this person in isolation, blah, blah, blah. And then said, his words, read it back, um, I've done my research on this person and he's not a very nice person. Yeah. It, well, that's called, you've made a judgment, Gary, based on what you've heard, what you think. That's not an investigation. That's not listening to his side of the story. That's not, and I agree that there should be some sort, and it's not going to be a court hearing, but the people who are controlling it, you have to look at, and this is where the politics comes in. Rubiales, as the president, or whatever he is, of the Spanish yeah. FA, yeah. he personally got, got the whole organisation together and said to them, we have a regional structure that should be controlling the regional setup. And, and if you're going to, like, even the kids' football or kids' basketball or... Yeah, all the other sports that happen in Spain, it's nearly all regionally controlled, as is their politics. But what he did, and nobody else has done, is these regional uh, czars, as I would call them, but the regional people who are in control of what's going on, never used to get any payment. Rubiales introduced a payment for the regional, let's call them directors, for one example. So they get a payment of €100,000 a year right. that he has introduced. Now, you tell me which. You know, and these people are the bold who sit in judgment on what happens in Spanish football, especially for the women. You tell me which one of those people is going to vote for Christmas. You're the turkey. Yeah. He's just given you €100,000 a year pay. And now what you do, you get rid of him because he's not a very nice person. What do you think is going to happen to all those payments when the next person comes along and says, that's a level of corruption? He's bought off all the regional people to make sure that they support him. And there's this, this small matter, and that's isn't political. There, as Andres was saying the other week, and the small matter of the fact that he brokered the deal with the Super Cup going to Saudi Arabia, and there's rumours of... A commission, you know, well in the well over yeah, ten million. And, yeah, and, yeah, but yeah. Giles, that's his personal level of corruption. Yeah, in my view, that's his personal personal stuff. I'm talking about the people that are controlling the game. So I don't know if is it eleven. I think there's eleven regional executives or whatever they call themselves, directors, yeah. and they all got a hundred thousand euros a year pay rise immediately. And those people are the ones making the decision. So set Rubiales aside. The judge, the judges, the court of Rubiales are these people. 
There's nobody else. Yeah. There's no special person. So, of course, the, you know, Sanchez has just come out and said what this person has done. And, and they can't say the Spanish FA are wrong because the people controlling the Spanish, Spanish FA are saying, well, actually, we're going to let it rest. The dust will go, you say, it'll, it'll go away. So the, politically, they come along and say, what you're doing is damaging the Spanish country. You're damaging our reputation in the world. That, that makes it political. It's the only way you can change a, a, an, an internally corrupt organisation. So with the best will in the world, you can't keep politics out of sport. And on that note, Alf, stop the, and running it. the bongos are here, so we're going to have to let you go because we're coming to the end of a very, very busy first half yeah, of, yeah. of uh, Viewpoint. Back after national and international news. Talk Radio Europe. Your voice in Spain. Discuss, challenge, inform, comment, viewpoint on Talk Radio Europe. Giles Brown. Live comment and discussion with studio guests. Viewpoint. Always live, always live. It's lines, live to the lines we go. Morning, Cooley, you're live on Thierry. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Yeah, hi, Giles. It's John in me. Yes, it? John. Just, just in case my last call misled uh, people. I, I retired 35 years ago, so I'm pretty well out of date. I just checked. Kissing on the lips against somebody's will is an offence in Australia, England and Spain, and considered these days to be fairly serious. So obviously I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> well, well, you know, welcome well, welcome to Jurassic Viewpoints uh, there, because Speak I think we, we all... We all, we all for yourself. That, 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 that some way. <laughs> of course, kiss, kiss you on the cheek in Spain... I'm not sure in England that would be an offence. Well, exactly. I mean, in, in Spain, I mean, the courts would be full to bursting, wouldn't they, every time, you know, every social occasion. But, but John, as okay. always, good to hear from you, thanks, as always, thanks, my friend. No, Thank yes, thanks very much indeed. If you want to get involved with today's show, you've got a viewpoint you want to get across on this or any other subject here on The Numbers. To contact TRE, please call 952-78-4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. Yes, indeed, those are the numbers to get in touch uh, with us for. Let's look at the uh, some of the stories making the front pages uh, in the uh, UK. A couple of things that you need to know. A couple of things that you need to know uh, this week. Uh, this making or this sorry, not this week. A couple of things you need to know that are making the news uh, today from the top um, on, on this day. Uh, this is interesting. King Yong Un is to visit uh, Putin. There you go. Uh, not, sorry for us. It's the way you just went. Yeah. Um, North Korean leader Kim Yong Un will travel to Moscow later this month to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, this is provided in CBS News. Two leaders will discuss the possibility of North Korea providing Russia with weapons to support its war in Ukraine. Uh, Kim is most likely to travel by armored train, sources told the New York Times. News of the potential meeting comes after the White House said it had new evidence that arms negotiations between the two countries are active advancing. Uh, meanwhile, the school scandal has forced Rishi Sunak to start off a new political year on the back foot. According to the FT, the Conservatives' autumn relaunch has been derailed uh, by the crumbling concrete crisis just as two by-elections are approaching. Meanwhile, Education Secretary Julian Keegan has defended being on holiday during the summer when further uh, evidence of the use of unsafe concrete in buildings came to light. Uh, three major water firms uh, illegally discharged sewage hundreds of times last year on days when it was not raining. Uh, the BBC investigation has suggested the practice known as dry spilling is banned because it can lead to a higher concentration of sewage in waterways. However, Thames Water, Wessex Water and Southern Water appear to have... Um, Collectively released sewage and dry spells for three and a half thousand hours. Industry body Water UK should, said the spills should be 
uh, investigated. The White House has opened a war room as it in, as it invest as it launches an aggressive counteroffensive against House Republicans, calling for an impeachment inquiry into Joe Biden. This is in the Times. The administration is gearing up for a high stakes showdown and has appointed two dozen lawyers, legislative experts, and communication staff. Kevin McCarthy, a Republican and the House Speaker, has indicated he could. Uh, begin an impeachment inquiry targeting Biden over his alleged foreign business dealings. Uh, meanwhile, five Israeli uh, men aged between 19 and 20 have been arrested after a British tourist was allegedly raped in Cyprus. The 20-year-old told a therapist she was sexually assaulted by men in the resort region of Ayanapa. She, she was taken by uh, force from the pool area of hotel to her room. They've evoked uh, uh, memories of a similar case when a British student accused 12 um, Israeli teenagers of gang rape in the same town. She's later the, that that particular case. She was subsequently found guilty of causing public mischief and fabricating uh, the claim. Meanwhile, scuffles broke out at the Venice Film Festival uh, at the premiere of. Uh, Woody Allen's new film, Coupe de Chance, as anger grew that the festival had given a slot to films by uh, Woody Allen, Luc Besson and Roman Polanski, uh, three directors hit by Me Too scandals. Protested chanted, no rape culture, outside uh, Allen's premiere as they attempted to get onto the red carpet. However, Woody Allen received a lengthy ovation as he arrived at the press conference, with one reporter describing it as the most rapturous welcome received by any director at the festival. Uh, meanwhile, uh, for the French government, is planning to ban uh, meaty terms like steak, grill, and spare ribs being used to describe plant-based products. Uh huh. So you were looking worried there for a minute, Ros. Uh, Agriculture Minister Marc Fes- Marc Fesneau said the decree is an issue of transparency and honesty, responding to the legitimate expectations of consumers and producers. Farmer meat companies object to times like times like plant-based burger or vegan sausage. Um, claiming uh, my blood runs cold when I see that uh, when claiming they confuse consumers Julien uh, Julien Anotin I think a lawyer from an organisation representing makers of vegan alternatives said the term term plant based steak had not been used for more than 40 years and finally western and southern Japan have become major hotspots for UFO sightings Uh, this is the Pentagon saying this using 27 years of data that's been made public for the first time. A map released on the website of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office shows where the most sightings have been recorded between 1996 and 2023. Other popular UFO sightings include a swathe of the Middle East that includes Iraq and Syria and the southeastern United States over South Carolina. And there you go. Little green men, Ros. Well, yes, uh, I, South Africa was, um, the coast of Durban was a, a popular place for landings. <laughs> popular place for landings? What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sightings. 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 <laughs> Sightings of landings. Sightings of landings. Sightings of landings. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. Thank you, Ross. Sorry, completely. me. <laughs> if you, if you. Should. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, hang on. Get yourself together, right? If you, if you uh, want to, if you, if you want to get involved with today's viewpoint, these are the numbers. To contact TRE, please call nine five two seventy eight four thousand. Email studio at tre dot radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. Yeah, I'm just. I, I know I'm going to go to schools, but it's interesting this thing about the red carpet event at, at Paris in, in Paris at Venice with Willie Allen and Roman Polinsky and Luc Besson. I wasn't aware of any uh, Luc Besson, of course, the director of. Uh, the Fifth Element, etc. Um, I wasn't aware of any Me Too claims against him, but that's just my ignorance. But Polanski and Woody Allen. Polanski, of course, infamously, he's barred from the United States because of his actions several decades ago. And and Allen, there's always been a, um, a a bit of a shadow cast recently over Woody Allen because he was like, but is you know is do do you uh, do, do do you here's a here's a thing for you, Ros. 
do do we hold hell do we hold should we hold our creative talents to um the same standards as uh, others in society i e you know can can you watch a Woody Allen film now without thinking about what he's or a Polanski film without thinking of what they've been accused of i i don't I've never liked Woody Allen's thinking his creative genius doesn't reach me right. so i i would um i wouldn't really watch his films but i i, I wouldn't kind of you know, well, I mean, th- the early cause fi- physical early f- damage or anything early to films him. Like, early films like Sleeper, for example, are, are, I think, are brilliant. But later films like Vicky Christina Barcelona or whatever, whatever it was with Javier Bardem, Penelope Cruz and Scarlett Johansson, I just thought it was a bit sort of dirty old manish, to be honest with you. I I'm amazed he's still alive, actually. <laughs> uh, though Polanski with The Pianist... Which I saw, you know, which well, is now twenty good. years old. It's an amazing film, but at the he same brilliant. time, he was brilliant. He was very. I, 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 mean, I think he's Davies quite good. Is, is one of the the, the the original chillers with Mia Farrow, who then became, of course, Woody Allen's wife, who then, of course, mm-hmm. m- made these accusations. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm a big Luc Besson film because of uh, things like The Big Blue, which is a, just a brilliant film. I, it's, it's, it's a film about diving. So what, yes, that's right. With, no, no, I'm... with Jean Reno. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, can can you separate? Is it possible to separate the artist the personality of the the creative from the from the body of work but separate in what way well, for you example, mean legally if, if you, or no, no, no. If, if if you if you see a work of art i mean yeah. for example not that yeah. you are a fan of his music but r kelly for example who's now gone to prison for for a very long time okay. for his abuse of, of of minors okay um can you listen to that music and not be affected by the fact that the, the person who did that has committed se- se- yeah you yeah, can yeah. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Nine five two seven eight four thousand. Just I'll throw that one into the mix. Can uh, you? Huh? Can you? Um, I. There are a couple. Yeah. Um. Not like. Well, film wise. Um. Yeah. Polanski. I can kind of get away with. I suppose. Um, but for, for for music, it's it sometimes like there's there was a guy there's a band called the Lost Prophets, and uh, their singing was was done for some absolutely horrendous sexual crimes, and I w- I wouldn't listen to their music on a, on a because I think that you can't you can't if they're singing about love or singing about something like that or relationships, and they've done it, they've had there was a French rapper as well who got done for rape, and I just thought no, I'm not listening to him talk about his love or or what you know the fact that he's. His, you know, his 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 skills with women, shall we say? And then you find mm-hmm. out he's been done for some horrendous sexual assault. Then it's not, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't sit well. Okay, so I think each. Ca- okay, to answer your question yeah. more more clearly, myself, yeah. I think it would depend on the particular uh, creative person and yeah. the situation. Right. So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't make a blanket answer to that. Oh, just thought we'd throw that into the viewpoint. See if anybody has some more some more thoughts about that. Just take a quick break. Viewpoint with Giles Brown. Always live, always lively. Joined in the studio by Roslyn Scott Gibb. If you want to get involved with the show, to contact TRE, please call 952 78 4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus 34 645 99 67 95. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. And some comments on that. Can you divorce the work? Of, can you divorce? Can you divorce the work from the person if the person is alleged or has committed something, uh, something, some, some misdemeanor stroke crime? Uh, I can't. Wait that somebody's come in here. I can't stroke. Won't listen to Michael Jackson. I don't care how talented he was. Uh, I also this one coming in. Um, Roz, uh, dear Roz, don't you think that uh, Polanski should lose his job then, like Ruby Alice? <laughs> I think we're talking 40 years late, a long time later for um, Polanski. No, I, um, okay, what we were talking about, I, I think that if we look too closely at, at actors, singers, producers, uh, creative people, mm. not many of them are all that squeaky clean. So maybe we have to differentiate a bit. Like Michael Jackson, I would listen to his music. Yes, I would. 
Okay, I know he was a convicted paedophile. There's no, no doubt he about no, it. He wasn't a convicted paedophile. Well, it's come out. Uh, a he lot of, has come out he recently, though. Yeah, okay, also, a lot, a lot of things are convicted, and he paid off. What's it? He paid off. Like, for, yeah, but no, yeah. he wasn't convicted. Okay, so. he wasn't. He, he was convincing, though. <laughs> and meanwhile, this one. Hi, Giles. News flash. Thank you. Now, just yes, go. Uh, news flash. Aliens have landed in America. They communicate only by opera music. They landed in Area Fifty One. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, yes, in, indeed. Get your uh, get yes, get your coat on that one. Uh, Nine five two seventy eight four thousand. We're talking we're talking toxic masculinity. Uh, we're talking about up, upskirting, weren't we? This whole situation in schools. Um, and it tends to be uh, we tend to be talking about a lot about masculinity over the past, especially over this past show. Uh, what with the first the first hour and um, that kiss. Um, but this 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 whole. You know, teachers. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to go live to the lines again. Nine five two seventy eight four thousand. Uh, good morning, Corley. You're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Oh my God, Ms. Gibb has just fallen straight into the trap. As far as I'm aware, Mr. Jackson, Michael Jackson, was never convicted. So how can he be hung, drawn, and caught for something he didn't do? Do in the eyes of the music. Law? Well, I said I listened to his music. But no, the, said, well, yeah, but a lot yeah, has come out recently. No, 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 no. Gary, Gary. In the Gary last is, year. Yeah, no, Gary, yeah, but he was never convicted. Okay, he was never convicted. Yes, okay, he was never convicted. You can't have smoke without fire or whatever. You're right, Gary, you're right. And, and, and no, with regard to... On, 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 on TRE, we are saying you're absolutely right, Gary. You, okay, thank you very much. And, was, and was, was there as much emphasis put on the girl that made false allegations against the Israelis about the rape? Was there? Well, nah, nah. Was there? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wait a minute. That just about sums it up. Wait a minute. We want an equal society where everyone's treated the same. Are you talking about the recent case it's right now? I'm, yeah. I'm talking about the case in uh, Cyprus, I believe, yeah, exactly. in yeah, which yeah, a young right. lady was uh, prosecuted and convicted. Yeah. Because there is a difference, yeah. prosecuted and convicted, for making false allegations against men. Yeah. Yeah, in, in an Israeli court, right? No, 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 no. no. Does that Cyprus. make a difference? It's in Cyprus. Oh, in Cyprus? Yes, it's in Cyprus, don't you? Ah, uh, this yeah. is Cyprus. Yes. But, yes, There's a mole there somewhere, but I won't go for it. All Bye-bye. right, Gary, you, just to let you know that you may, you may have... You've been waiting sound. for that, haven't I've you, been, Gary? I've been waiting for a soundbite that you actually said you're right. So he's, he's gone, and that's my grass grandma yeah, well. saying. And there she was done. Yeah, just to... Uh, just, just made his day. Just, um, just to, yeah, I've read that real line. As Dave comes as well, yes. Um, you... Um, you, we, you, Michael Jackson wasn't a convicted paedophile. Thank you, everybody who was saying that. Yeah. Um, so then, I know he wasn't convicted, but you don't pay, pay people off if you're innocent. That's a bit of a, well, OK, that's somebody else is coming in on that one. Uh, 952 is the phone. In fact, I'll give you the, the numbers here. To contact TRE, please call 952-78-4000. Email studio at tre.radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. And we're always live, always lively. Uh, we have indeed uh, stored up a, a little nest of hornets there. Um, separating person, and uh, this is Elizabeth, separating uh, person and uh, artistic expression. Do you know Do you know what Picasso, Monet, Shakespeare, etc., etc. were doing? If not, is it right to enjoy their output, or should we find out before looking or listening? Thank you very much indeed. To the lines we go again, 952-78-4000. Morning, Corley, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Yeah, good morning. It's Sharon again. Morning, Sharon. Uh, hi. Um... I see it's very sad this, you know, that all these calls from from various male callers. I think women's advancement in sport and other areas that they've they've had to fight to get through in is making an awful lot of our male callers feel very insecure. Uh, and I find it quite worrying that they are becoming part of the problem. People who I never had down as being um, uh, sort of uh, anti-feminist, anti-women, I'm beginning to worry about them now. So uh, I just think um, they are becoming part of the problem. If you hate, if you become a misogynist, um, you are definitely part of the problem. Um, that's all I've got to say, really. Thank you. Ross, what's coming in? Hey, Thanks, um, Sharon. I, I agree with you, but I, I really believe there's a much deeper um, um, 
what do you call it? Back, 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 uh, back. What's what's the word I'm looking for? Backlash. Backlash right, okay. yes, against yes. women at the moment in the last yes. couple of years for the small steps we might have moved forward. Yes, although we they're don't. They're knocking us back. They're they're kicking us back. Yes. Um, in every direction, uh, and uh, a lot of it is, um, of course. I mean, I mean, look, a, a woman doesn't even have control of her own body regarding abortion in the United no. States. Then Absolutely. there's all this Iraq, um, sorry, it, yeah, um, uh, Afghanistan yeah. and Iran, which is horrendous, taking away life from these women is, yeah. is appalling but it's all over these are the obvious statements but it's all over and you can see it from as you say sharon from the phone calls men are getting yes. really angry yes. how dare you women come into our sport how dare you be on the panel ross <laughs> exactly yeah, oh it's anything they can pick up they're delighted nice. yeah <laughs> thanks a lot cheers thanks very much indeed for life bye. again, again morning call bye 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 nine nine five two seven eight four thousand. morning call you live on theory what's your name where are you calling from what's your viewpoint please yeah hi hi it's john again hi john uh, on, on, again i only half heard it so please excuse me if i got it wrong again um wait i think you said that people don't pay up if they're not guilty to settle a case that was a, that was a, that was a call in from us saying people don't pay off pay people off if they're not guilty. Okay, well that's 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 poppycock because if somebody has enough money, do they really want to be dragged through the courts with all their dirty linen and laundry uh, displayed? I mean, take you or me for example. If someone made an allegation against us and for a few hundred quid, we could we could settle it and just walk away. Yeah, we wouldn't want all our past and present and whatever displayed in public. So the fact that somebody pays up does not mean they were guilty of the offence. Far from it. Well, I think it was millions. It wasn't a few hundred quid with well, Michael yeah. Jackson. Yeah, we, but, we are talking millions. Yeah. But it's only more recently that the confirmations have come about him being well, a paedophile. No, the, Ross Lind, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop saying that, all right? Thank you for the call. Thank yeah. you for the call in there, Joe. Uh, sorry. Okay, bye. Indeed, sorry. Uh, let's go live to the other line then. Thank you very much. Nine five two seven eight four thousand is the phone number. Morning, call you live on Thierry. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Morning, Charles. Peter. Again. Yeah, Peter. Good morning to you. Good morning. Cool. You said yeah, like you were getting getting to the edge, are you? Getting to the every. The edge it, I, I, I'm D mob happy. I'm off tomorrow. Don't worry about it. So, but obviously, Roz is Roz is throwing some curve like like the like the pitch feminist pitcher she is. She's throwing me, and you like because you know your baseball. She's throwing me some curve balls as I as I stand on the on the bottom ninth or whatever. Well, as long as they're not coming from men, you'll be all right. Indeed, one curve ball with one, you'll be all right. Um, I, transgender pictures is what I didn't, I didn't have on my bingo card, Peter, but there you go. Yeah, and I've, ne- I've never seen anyone transit the other way from uh, from female to man and then try to crash their sport. I haven't seen that happen yet. So uh, that, that paints a picture as well, doesn't it? So, uh, let's, uh, let's, be... let's move on. That's okay. So what could be yeah. there? What could we do for Well, the problem we've got, Giles, and, and uh, it's running through the theme today, is, is personality. I can remember when we spoke about Farage, and I said that it was the bank's issue, and everybody jumped on whether Farage was a nice guy or not. We're yeah. doing it with Rubiales, we're doing it with everybody. Whether Michael Jackson's guilty or not, should we listen to his music? Let's leave it to the public and uh, let the public make their minds up. And some, some people you can't change their minds, some you can. And, uh, and as I said, keep politics out of sport. And, and, and as Alf always says, it's everywhere. Of course, it's everywhere. But there are levels. I mean, if, if a teacher is done a misdemeanor at school and the board is meeting whether to reprimand that person. That's politics, but we don't know about that. But what I'm talking about is politics and sport is governments should not make decisions of whether people should or shouldn't travel to certain countries under un- certain conditions when for their sports. That should be down to the individuals, as we saw in the, the great rugby uh, debates in, in South Africa and things. And uh, it, can, it ruins people's careers because people keep getting onto the personality. Going back to Rubiales, whether he should or should be, so, to be honest with you, I've, I've never even seen that kiss, and I don't care. And uh, <laughs> what people don't understand, as I've said before, I've competed at the very, very highest level in an amateur sport. And in that amateur sport, I was selected for the UK. So no one had ever been in, and I selected for World Bench Press Championships, which I happened to win. When I went there, I was fined ten pounds because they didn't have a British flag to fly on the podium when I won. Yet I had five officials travel with me, British amateur weightlifting officials, with their wives who had hotel rooms, 
and all expenses paid by the British Amateur Weightlifting Association, and I went there on my own steam and had to share a room with somebody else. That's why I'm so passionate about not having politics in sport and these, these corrupt organisations. Mm. And, and that's like, I, I, people do not understand. I've broke world records before. I've been with guys that are first and stone, six foot five, and see them break in, down into tears and hug you and kiss you. In the moment, there is nothing like it. But the down comes thick and fast and 10 times as big. And that's why many, many sports people, not men, sports people yeah. have this, this, this trouble transitioning back into normal society. And then they get judged on it because they do this or do that. And, and it's, it's such a shame that we just keep, the only man that ever comes on here and speaks a bit of sense is John who came on before, because he always tries to show us what the crime is, what the, the situation is, what the law is. But we're all going after the people. Now, if there's a, a movie director or a musician that is supposed to have done this and settled out of court, we're never ever going to know the truth. But it's down to the public whether they want to listen to their music or, or watch their movies. And, and I used to listen to a lot of music when I was younger that was considered protest songs back then. A lot of people didn't even understand what they were. A lot of young people when I was young used to walk around with Che Guevara shirts on. They didn't even know Che Guevara if they bumped into him in the street. Indeed. So a lot of it, there's a lot of it is ignorance. And, uh, and, and as I said before, I'm a big, big fan of the UFC. And Donna White, the most politically incorrect man on this planet, and he's got a few money, so he doesn't need to care. But he, those fighters are still coming out under the Russian flag, under the Ukrainian flag. You know, they're playing their national anthems and things. So... And, and nobody seems to bat an eyelid about it. But you, if you start telling athletes they can't do this, we can't, especially Olympians. You know, four years in, in the making. You have to be born at the right time to make it to the Olympics. For a government to turn around and say, sorry, you can't travel, people don't understand. And, and, and also, going back to Rubiales, nobody's mentioned. I did see a picture of him on the, on the news somewhere with his two teenage daughters sat in the background looking absolutely terrified. And imagine what they're going through right now. So it's all right to sit there and say, get rid of him, sack him. But it's politics that's doing it. As um, uh, who was on last week, um, the Spanish friend? Uh, Andres. Andres. He mentioned in the opening statement that, that he comes from a political family. So we all know what's happening now. It's nothing to do with the kiss. You know, they're not going after Frankie de Tori for kissing his horses, are they? So, uh, <laughs> but, um, yes. You know, I've... I've seen many a moment in sport, many, many a moment where the emotion has taken over the, the, the time. And uh, I think people should sit down and, yes, I do believe he was wrong. But I don't think that it should go on for two weeks discussing whether he should be sacked or not sacked. If he's going to get sacked, get sacked for his, for his, for his job. Ross wants to come in. He's in, a, he's in a job because of who he is. That's the problem we got. Okay. So, uh yeah, but we're not talking... The real issue is not the kiss. That's what's publicised. The issue is his general behaviour, and he's got a history. And he was already being checked into, looked into in depth before this happened. This is just the final issue at the top. I don't think you listened to a word I said, Rosalind. Yes, I I've listened said. to it. Well, I said it's not about the personality. We can all look online. You know, a, a, a guy said to me, many, my, my wife always says to me, you're, you're very lucky because you don't care what people think about you. And someone said to me many, many years ago, 99% of the people you're ever going to meet, see, read about, you're never going to see again. So why do you worry so much? And that, I think that's the problem is we all worry about, as I've said, you know, Make your bed before you go off to save the world. Worry about your neighbours. Worry about your people in your street. Worry about your family. Stop worrying about everybody else. And because it's all bullshit. I'm worried we about. We don't know who Rubiales is. No one knows who he is, other than the people very closest to him. We don't know. But the fact that Spain won the World Cup and the manager who came in wiped the team out, I think he needs a little bit of credit on that. I'm not defending the man. I don't know the man. I don't care whether he gets the sack or not. Well, he's probably overpaid. He's probably got the position through his family and connections. And whether he gets sacked or not, but let's think about his family, his daughter. Look what's happening to his father. Let's have to his daughter. It's, 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 you know, it's all right yeah. for us to sit back here. We don't even know the guy. Let's look at the crime. And the crime was a misdemeanor, I would say. And, and if they both acted properly, it would have been over within five minutes. They both come out and said, yeah. oh, yeah, we're in the moment. Da-da-da, bang, bye. Yeah. 
But again, you can argue that in a world, in a world, as the saying goes, where you know everything is, is is has to be there has to be a backstory, there has to be an investigation. You can't we can't just brush it off and say he at the no. moment is very sorry. Then, then we then because then other people will leap on it, going you know this 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 is an example. This is a this is a, a graphic demonstration of what is wrong in society. And yes. then suddenly, and, 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 and to your point, Joel, sorry to interrupt, but to your right. point, you're exactly right. We spoke it before about cancel culture, and this is what it is. And no politicians anywhere in the world, anywhere, can come out now and win their seat or their position on um, on merit. It's about disruption of the opposition, and we're seeing it at every level. And it's even happening in sport. You know, they're trying to get managers out of football clubs. And it's just it's across the world. And, and, and again, you know, challenges about misogynist. I think most men are realists and they just want to stand up for what's right. And I think most women are as well. But we're being fractured by by this garbage. And, and for the upskirting thing, it wasn't around 10 years ago. And the reason it wasn't around 10 years ago, because we didn't have mobile phones. Correct. It's a new thing. And it's, it's because these kids have been sexualized at such a young age. And it just shouldn't be happening. They should be out kicking a football, regardless of gender. Uh, with jumpers for pole, uh, goal Post, posts yeah. up to the age of 12, they're all equal. But after that, it changes. So, Peter, right. Many Hello. points. Thanks have very much. For that. Thanks very much indeed. Quick break and then back in the last 20 minutes of Viewpoints. Viewpoint on Talk Radio Europe with Giant Brown. Always live, always lively. This show proving no exception because I'm joined by the always entertaining and somewhat libelous Rosalind Scott Gibb. By the way, Ritson's has come in. Stephen Ritson, again, good morning to you, Stephen, up there in Cologne. Uh, has said you can't, we, we can't libel dead people. You can't be done for libel for dead people. So there you go. Is that good news or bad news? It's good news for you because that's what you said about Michael Jackson. It's very good news unless he's going to come back from the grave okay. and moonwalk over you. If you see a ghost, uh-huh. if you feel oh, the, the presence of a ghostly <laughs> moonwalker All next right. to you, it's Michael Jackson. All, All right. right. Uh, and uh, the fact that she said, it, okay, the, the fact, here we go back to uh, the, that kiss. The fact that she immediately said she didn't like it and then there was pressure extended on her to say she didn't mean it as if she didn't know her own mind. Just when you thought the patriarchal society in Spain was improving, Heaven forfend if Fox ever get in power. You are nodding your head Mm -hmm. to that one as well. Uh, Well, she was pressured. She was definitely pressured by everybody around her to say it was mutual. And um, and meanwhile, um, uh, Gary seems to be picking fights with most people, apart from the fact he's saying that people are... uh, We've already... So, uh, Gary has said, was Peter emotional when his team got beat 5-0 at the weekend? Fighting talk, Gary. And also, he said, we've already started the party over here because you start your holidays tomorrow. Thank you, Gary. Um, thank you. Have, please have a, have a have, wear a silly hat for me, please. Nine five two seventy eight four thousand is the phone number. Studio at tre radio is the email. The Facebook page is Talk Radio Official. You can WhatsApp me on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Uh, looking at some of the just quick look at the FIFA officials because that's the sort of thing I do when I'm not working. Um, Debbie, there are obviously females on the panel of uh, FIFA, including the vice president, who is mm-hmm. um, Debbie Hewitt. Uh, so it's not an entirely male dominated sport. Now then, let's get away from that. Mm-hmm. 60 minutes about, or thereabouts. Oh, and I said oh, that, and as soon as I said that, the phone genie strikes again. Morning, Cooley, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Yeah, hi, Charles. Just a last, a last thing on this kiss. Yes. The, the answer is simple. If, she committed, if he committed a crime, he should be prosecuted either in, in Australia, and I believe they have the jurisdiction to do it in Spain because they're both Spanish or whatever. So if he's committed a crime, convict him. If he hasn't committed a crime, let's forget it and move on. Because as, is it Peter from London said, it, it goes on and on and on. It's absolute rubbish. Well, yes. again, in a society where we have to rolling news 24-7, I think they, they, a lot of it needs to be... You know, because they need to, to fill, they need to fill, I'd say column inches, but virtual column inches. So whether they should just get, get on with it. But of course, we have back and forth. It's filled, it's filled up an hour and a bit of this program. So I'm not, this is, that's quite yeah. pet. Quite I a, don't, yes, yeah, go with on. Respect, yeah, with respect, Charles, it shouldn't have taken up because there are other things that are much more important and much more interesting than whether somebody pissed somebody and didn't, right. and whether they agreed or whether they didn't, and whether they were pressure. And everybody's guessing. People are saying she did this or didn't do that. None of us know. What would he like to discuss? What would he like to discuss? What would John like to discuss? John, what would you like to discuss? I'll I'll wait until you you answer it and then I'll agree or disagree. Oh, oh, I thought there was something you particularly wanted to discuss. No, no. Apart from the fact that 
talking about things that have no relevance okay. yeah. to, to people's life isn't important. So I say, if they've committed a crime... Uh, this is the attitude to women we're talking... This is a big issue, actually. It's not a kiss. This is what I've said right from the very beginning. The kiss is just the tip of the iceberg. We're talking about the way women are treated in Spain and internationally. But at the moment, we're talking about Spain, the way women are treated okay. by men in Spain. And it's a big issue. OK, Ross, if you want to talk about the way women are treated, that's fine. Talk about that. But in reality, you are talking about an instance that happened in Australia and whether it was right or wrong. And as a simple ex-police officer, my view is prosecute them or not. And if they're guilty, convict them. And if they're not, acquit them. And then we can all at least know where we're coming from. Mm. Because if, and I'm not saying so, if she agreed to it or wasn't offended, then it's no crime and therefore no woman was insulted. If she was insulted, prosecute him and, and let him pay the penalty. Get a, get another I mean, as for whether... Yeah, as for whack back whether he should be sacked from his job, I'm not a sports person. I've got no idea, and I couldn't care less. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks very much. For the, thanks very much for the right. call in there. If you want to get involved in today's show uh, and call back the uh, person who was calling in before, uh, then these are the numbers. To contact TRE, please call nine five two seventy eight four thousand. Email studio at tre dot radio. Send us a WhatsApp on plus three four six four five ninety nine sixty seven ninety five. Message us on Facebook, Talk Radio Europe Official, or tweet us at TRE Talk Radio. And looking at some more bits of pieces coming in. Uh, the fact, uh, no, I was going to say that, and of course I go live to the lines. Good morning, cool. You're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Hi, Jazz. First of all, if I forget to say it, have a lovely holiday or whatever you're doing. Ah, yes, um, the goddaughter's coming over. Oh, lovely. Have a, have a great time. Um, just to say that this, this, this is all about uh, power. It's, he was her manager. He had uh, authorization and power above her. What we need in Spain now is more female managers, as we have with the lionesses. Uh, I mean, we ha they had a, have a brilliant manager. I think she is she Dutch. I, I can't she's remember the nationality. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and she's brilliant. We we need more women managers. This is the problem here now. We need to move on uh, further upwards and further onwards. And I, this is it's 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 all about power. It's not about a kiss. Uh, it was about the, uh, the antisocial behaviour of rubbing parts of your body that you shouldn't be rubbing in public, and, uh, and, and, and so, so, so on and so forth. So it's all about power, and, and, and this needs to change in Spain regarding um, management and people running stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much for the call, Thank and you're you. nodding your head stage there, Roz. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, sorry? Was she talking about rubbing your penis? No, no. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, and this is this in from Gary. I'd warned Roz about using the P word, and then there she goes. So uh, the big it's a big issue for women. Excuse me. It's a big issue for women. Frostland. It's a big issue for women. The kiss was a small indiscretion, but it's it is it's underlying misogynist issue that needs addressing. Rubiales is a symptom, and yes, the England manager is indeed Dutch. Uh, Gary has come in saying, "What a show! Started off badly, plummeted midway, hit the bottom towards the end, and fizzled out without glory. Good God, why do I pay? Why do I pay pay my Spanish radiogram license for this? We've still got ten minutes, Gary. Hang on, yeah. uh, must disagree." <laughs> This must disagree. This kiss issue, misogyny, is important. I have two daughters. It's just how it's dealt with. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, it's part of the smoke and mirrors of current journalism. Let's look at something unimportant and ignore the things that the powers that be don't want discussed. So, interesting, interesting points there. Right. We've got 10 minutes, Roz. If we you could. say that, if you use the P word one more time, I should be very upset. <laughs> So. Okay, so we could actually talk about the, the return of COVID if we want to get really ah, down to earth. Yeah. Or we go back yeah, to the schools there, yeah, and, and the way... School. Yeah, yeah, well, the way funds are being withdrawn from education. I mean, I just don't think there's, there's any excuse for this. Um, Teachers are underpaid. Yeah. The schools are not... And then they start... Over a 1,000 schools, 1,080 schools need to be checked out. Why are they waiting till September? I know. I feel so sad for students. They've already gone through two years. 
teachers too as well. We're going live to the lines again because there's somebody on the line. Morning, Cooley, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's your viewpoint, please? Sorry, Giles. Peter again. Yes, Peter. I, pr- I promised myself I wouldn't call again. But, well, you know, uh, you hey. Know, when the, well, when the subject of sport comes up, it's uh, my little thing, you know. But um, I, I can't get them, let them get away with it. Agree wholeheartedly with Sharon. You need more females, management, set up, everything. It's standalone thing. But I've always lived by the famous saying is I've learned everything from standing on the shoulder of giants. And you're not going to be a great female coach unless you've played great football or at least a decent level of football. That's not been going on for a long, long time. And many of them are learning at the apron strings of men. And that's unfortunate, but it's true. So, you know, once they get to a position when they are as um, experienced as the men, because at the moment they're not. That's not to say there aren't some great women coaches out there, because I watch that Chelsea uh, manager and Southampton manager, yeah. and I think both of them speak a great game, very tactical aware, but they're dealing with a lot lesser level of footballer. That's the difference we got. Could you see them going into the Man City squad and, and, and dealing with those? And, and just to put a cap on it. We don't live in a misogynist society. We live in a society where there's push and shove all the time. And, and as Jordan Peterson once pointed out that made him famous, if women are so insecure in their position on this world, they can, if they want to swap with men, they've got to accept that more men die at work, more men commit suicide, more men go to prison, more men die in war, more men are likely to die young. More, many, many young men are sexually abused when they're young men go through a care system churches and things like that so it's not uh, it's not all the women that are suffering many many men have had to suffer so there is stop taking it as him and her and them and us it's all of us are subject to the abuse of power regardless of where it comes from it's like i speak we speaking i was speaking to a friend of mine the other day same subject yeah why is it when a, a woman goes into an office and is very powerful, very outspoken, and doing her job very well. And she gets labelled as some sort of bully and some sort of wannabe man, lesbian, all women quote that. But when you get an abusive woman in a relationship with a man, the man's under the sun. So, you know, mm. we can't win, can we? So, uh, right, I'll definitely go this time. All, all right, well, yeah. Cheers, Josh. Cheers, thanks very much, Peter. Ross. Great quote. We don't live in a misogynistic world, says a misogynistic man. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that you see, now, Peter's going to call back on that because, you know, because you should call him in. He's not, he's got, he's not misogynist at all. He's got a very strong set of principles. He's got a very strong point, but, but absolutely not. He's, he's, I wouldn't call. Well, I'm not a woman either. So, so, so. I mean, okay. last time I looked. Sorry, I just because I, okay. I had I had a you, you know what and you well, know what. Well, I mean, to, to my opinion, hey, indeed, you are. Right. Right. We're all to inter- my opinion, indeed, and because that's what makes viewpoint. That's what makes viewpoints the show that it is today. Ross. Absolutely. Nine five two seventy eight four thousand. Uh, the phone number. Yeah. So just quickly looking at those. I was going to leave them with the funny, but I can't remember what the funny we were going to leave them with was. Anyway. Um, uh, yes, so it's not funny. Schools. How how can it take a government? How can it take an education department up to literally days before schools are going to get back? You were saying children have had a rough enough time as it is with, with the COVID, with the being, COVID and being away else. from and schools for two years, and now yeah, go back to that. How can that happen? How can that happen? I know. Well, I, in a developed world, because 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 people aren't getting into politics. Uh, there's been a, a basic shirking of responsibility. Going live to the lines again. Morning, Cooley, you're live on TRE. What's your name? Where are you coming from? What's your viewpoint, please? Yeah, good morning. It's Sharon again. Sharon. Um, uh, just to say, uh, I, me thinks that Peter is very afraid um, of, the, of the future women. But uh, it's all about, uh, he was completely missing the point. I know that the suicide rate amongst men is very high. Um, sorry, I've got my radio on. Um, is, is, is higher than women. Uh, women. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about power and who holds the purse strings and who runs the strategy and departments that um, have met the most power over society and it's still mostly male um, even in the UK Houses of Parliament which is a lot more diverse than it used to be so um, although this lot are pretty exceptional I have to admit it's that the way you say this lot Sharon with such disdain every time you say it that brings a smile to my makes my little dark heart sore. yeah well, it, it, well they don't deserve any uh, civility uh, the, the, this government rather don't deserve the uh, civility that m- maybe 
we're supposed to be giving them. But anyway, that, that's my point. It's all about power. Peter completely misses the point. At the end of the day, with all these strategies and all these departments and, 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 and public whatever, uh, at the end of the day, the m men have more power than women over women. That's my point. Thank you. And the basic point I always say, apart from anything else, salaries have not gone up for women. It's no, they haven't. Between uh, 20 and 30 percent lower than men internationally. And yeah, that hasn't and for, changed. That's and for doing the same job, Ross. And for doing the same job. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Uh, the, Liz in Brighton. Uh, Reschools, apparently the government asked for this information over a year ago and they still haven't had replies from all schools. Also, last month, more information arose, which, um, which, hang on a second. Somebody, the, the, the way that this, my computer is set up is that certain things pop up and, and somebody's, Julie's just, Julie's just shot across Liz. Right. Uh, also last month, in more information arose, which made the question more urgent. By the way, the UK does not have enough structural engineers, engineers to check all schools in a month. Oh, that's, a, that's, that's, that's very comforting, isn't it? So they, it's not, all, not all schools got back, got their replies back in time, but now they haven't got enough uh, structural engineers to check out the information. So it's a real last thing. Julie's come in and she's saying not every male football manager was a star football player. Look at Arsene Wenger. Clues in the word manager. Look at Arsene Wenger, of course. Um, in, indeed. So um, that's... Um, uh, Your last like, line you wanted to remember was to do with it's a year's anniversary. It's, that's, thank you so <laughs> much, Ros. Thank you, yes. Uh, and thank you for, I think it was, who sent, who sent in this thing? Because momentous occasion. And I think we should all stand and have to take a moment's silence. For what? For this, this, this. Well, I think it was a watershed moment in British politics. Oh, today, it was. <laughs> today marks, marks a year since Liz Truss took over the helm of the top <laughs> office in the land. You actually just genuinely flocked to the new. Yes, reaction. I know. So in six weeks, we can. 40, 44 days. 44. That yes. lettuce. Salad days. <laughs> as, as somebody wrote, it was the beginning of our salad days period. And nobody's actually. Paul, that was it. Paul. Paul was in the one, that one. Liz Truss winning Tory race to become Britain's next MP, re defeating Rishi Sunak, whatever happened to him, um, by 54%, 57.4% 57 of Tory members' votes to former chances, 42.6%. Liz Truss, of course, a period that should go down, you know, in, in the annals, go down. <laughs> in the annals of, of history. Amazing um, that she was invited to these um, various associations in the States and making thousands. Strange of that, eh? Extraordinary. Or of all people. Of, of all, all people. people. Yes. And she, but she was, she was, of course, removed. I mean, as, of all the really intelligent, visible. educated, talented women, why her? And on that, <laughs> and we always like to leave them with a cliffhanger, Ros. So on that note, as I prepare to pack my bags and go off and enjoy it with my bucket and spade, um, I will. Uh, we will leave them with a thing about why, why, you know, why it's just like why Liz Trust. I think basically that's a good one. That's a why good one. Liz Trust? Why Liz Trust? Right, Ros. Once again, thank you very much for your for your thank help. You, I think, Josh. A I great think, pleasure. I think we didn't need an extra members of the panel this time around <laughs> because once we get Ros in, I mean, the, the rest is you know from a, from a start. But no, I mean, all joking aside, Ros. Thanks for coming in today and helping with this point. And also, this this is big, and people say, oh goodness sake it's that it's a divisive issue yes but viewpoint we if everybody agreed with each That's other what it's supposed to be indeed viewpoint indeed. and who knows i mean ruby Alice may still be there when we convene again next time you're on he might be mm. running fifa worse things point. happen maybe these, these things happen yeah very because, sad and all thought. because he there he went there and he grabbed his exactly exactly <laughs> right then almost out of time i Ros resisted you insisted you mean his penis ah. <laughs> I'm off on holiday. Rosalind Scott Gibb, as always, thanks very much for uh, your, your input today. Thank you very much, Rosalind. Thank you, Giles. Thank you, everybody, to all our lovely listeners. Indeed. Right then, almost out of time. It is once again been my pleasure, been my pleasure and my privilege uh, to bring you today's viewpoints. Um, and thanks very much for all the calls and good debate today. Well done. Everybody give yourself a slap on the back. Right, I'm off for a couple of days. Uh, I'll be back, uh, not this Friday, Friday afterwards. Uh, we've got a best of GB, not GQ. And Jer Sweeney will be standing in manfully uh, for me. So be nice to him, please. Um, uh, well, he's be standing in on, on Let's Talk. He'll also be standing in on Viewpoints, but I'm not letting him touch GB, not GQ. Have a fantastic rest of your time. I'll see you on Friday the 15th. Take care. Be good. Stephen Ritson up next.
views expressed on Viewpoint by invited studio guests and callers do not constitute an opinion endorsed in any way by Talk Radio Europe. You've been listening to a TRE production. If you've enjoyed this program, there'll be another episode waiting for you next week, right here on this platform, where you can also access our extensive back catalogue of shows and interviews. For more information on our live programming, social media channels and apps, and how to contact Talk Radio Europe, please visit tre.radio.